Well, Father Vincent is a priest of the Archdiocese of Indianapolis, uh, a great archdiocese, and it's designated exorcist. He is the author of the book from St. Paul Institute, Exorcism, the Battle Against Satan and His Demons. Father, thanks so much for being with you. I was with us. I was really looking forward to this today. How are you? I'm doing very well, and I'm happy to be with you today. You know, Father, there's, there's a, always a lot of buzz uh, in popular media, media about exorcisms, but you've worked hard to fight the fallacies on social media, and in, and in this book you do it also. Why do you think there's such an attraction to exorcism and also a misunderstanding? Yes, because I think you're right. There is a great fascination with the devil. People, uh, if you want to talk about Jesus, maybe 20 people will show up. If you talk about the devil, you'll get about 200. Mm -hmm. But I think there's always that fascination with the unknown, which is why, as an exorcist for the past 15 years, I've always wanted to be public about my appointment by my bishop as a way to really present what the church teaches about the reality of the devil and to debunk a lot of the myths that are out there. Because once we have a better understanding of who the devil is, then we come to realize we have nothing to fear. Could you talk about your experience, Father? Um, how did you become an exorcist? How does that work? Uh, um, you know, does someone approach you, or is this something that you, uh, you know, inquire about? How does it all work? I always say I got the appointment because I was at the, uh, the wrong place at the wrong time. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, every Catholic bishop is an exorcist wow. by virtue of his uh, Episcopal ordination. And then at his discretion, he can appoint any priest to perform an exorcism in his diocese, or he can choose to appoint one or more of his priests on a stable basis. So back in 2005, I was appointed by my archbishop. And then in the early part of 2006, I trained in Rome. So there was a Franciscan priest who allowed me to participate in 40 exorcisms that he performed while I was there. And that enabled me to learn firsthand the church's ministry to those who were up against the forces of evil. Father, we've seen so many different characterizations of the devil uh, in movies and in writings. Uh, what, what is, who is the devil and how does he interact into our lives? Well, the devil is a uh, fallen angel. So we think of Lucifer who fell in the book of Revelation talks about how his tail swept one-third of the stars out of the sky. So along with Lucifer, one-third of the angelic choir fell. Uh, he is personified. There's a lot of people that believe that, you know, evil is a metaphor, but the church has consistently taught that evil is personified in what we call the devil and his demons. And their goal would be to destroy humanity so that we would make the same choice that they themselves have made to reject God. In our rite of baptism and exorcism is done, how does, how does this grace assist the newly baptized to fend off spiritual attack? Yeah, all of us are poisoned, if you will, by original sin, so the fall of Adam and Eve. So in the sacrament of baptism, there is a minor exorcism that is performed as a way to give us God's grace to combat the, uh, the forces of evil throughout our lives. Mm -hmm. And in your book, it helps us to understand how the devil recognizes the divinity of Jesus and tells us the necessary steps to combat the forces. What's one thing you always want to reinforce with people? The number one thing is if we're living out our faith and our commitment to God, especially as Catholics, if we're going to Mass, if we're praying, you know, praying the rosary, if we're doing, you know, Bible studies and things like that, if we're standing right in the eyes of God, then we have nothing to fear. You know, the devil is an opportunist. He's always going to look for the weakest prey, if you will. And if we're spiritually strong by living out our own commitment to God, then the devil is nothing for us to be concerned about. In today's world, it seems as if people are trying to push God out of the picture. I think they're also trying to push the devil out of the picture. How do we make people aware that, that this is a reality? Well, you're right that faith is in decline in the lives of many people today. And I think that, that goes hand in hand because there's a rejection of God 
there seems to be a greater fascination with the devil. I mean, you look at uh, television today and other media, you know, the topic of the devil is probably at the very top of the list. So there's a fascination with him. But you're right. I think people want to get to the point where not only have we pushed God out of the picture, but we want to push the devil out of the picture. And somehow we elevate the human person, which was the temptation of the serpent in the Garden of Eden when he told Eve, surely you will not die. You will become like God. And that's the goal, I think, of the devil is for us to replace God with ourselves. And he does prefer to work in the shadows or on the periphery. He doesn't really want to be in the limelight. You know, there's a, a famous quote coming out of the, uh, the French poet Baudelaire that says, you know, the devil's cleverest ruse is to convince people that he does not exist. So he would prefer that humanity reject God and then he can just kind of fade off into the shadows because then he will have achieved his goal. With, within confidentiality that you can or cannot tell us, is there anything, Father, that you have seen that has just amazed you during your role? Oh, absolutely. You know, the, the uh, manifestations of the devil are meant to instill fear. I've seen everything over the years from people levitating, eyes rolled in the back of the head, foaming at the mouth. I did an exorcism a few years ago where when the demon manifested, the person's eyes turned green and the pupils became slanted like a serpent. And the voice came out of the mouth of the person that said, you know, you can't get rid of us. We've been here too long and you're not strong enough. So again, the devil wants to instill fear. But in an exorcism, what the church is doing is taking the very core aspects of our Christian faith, which the devil has rejected, and literally throwing them into his face, recognizing that those are the things that will defeat him. What's the biggest misconceptions that people have? The biggest misconception, I think, would be that people believe that God and the devil are on the same playing field, that sense of dualism. But in reality, we have to remember that the devil is a creature. He's a fallen creature. He's superior in intellect than ourselves. But again, he's just a creature. And there's no way that we should ever put a creature on the same level as God the Creator. Now, a lot of people are fortunate to have the services of you, but I'm sure that there are other people who aren't aware of it. What happens to those people who have had this, this contact with the devil, but there's no one there to help them? That is true. You know, when I was appointed back in 2005, at the time, I was only one of 12 stably appointed exorcists in the United States which is why I trained in Rome, there really wasn't anyone to mentor with here in the United States. And the rite of exorcism teaches that the best way to learn the ministry is the apprenticeship model. So again, I was able to find that Franciscan priest in Rome who allowed me to participate. Currently, there are about 125 stably appointed exorcists in the United States. So the number has grown because the church does want to minister to the people who truly need her help. And the danger would be that if the church doesn't respond, then people might turn to the wrong sources to find the help that they need. And the people they turn to might just end up leaving them even more broken than before. So the people who uh, don't have someone to turn to, we should certainly pray for them, that they reach out to the church and find the help that they need. Well, Father, I could go on and on and on, but we're, unfortunately we're out of time. Where can people get the book and also follow your work? Yeah, the book is available at uh, the St. Paul Institute. It's also available on Amazon. And again, the, the goal of the book is to really give people a general understanding of what the church believes about the reality of the devil and how the church defeats him through the ministry of exorcism. Mm -hmm. You know, if you put my name out there anywhere, you know, on, on the internet, you're going to find many ways that uh, one can reach out to me. I network with exorcists all over the world. If somebody contacts me from a different part of the country or the world, then I, my goal would be to try to connect them with a priest in their area who would be able to work with them and give them the help that they need. Well, thank you, Father, for all that you do, and thanks for being on This Is The Day today. Thank you. My pleasure. Bye-bye.